There we go. Is this the old one? No, this is what? the new one. This is this is the new one. Yep. So, which one are we trying to pop in on? <laughs> okay, this is the new. So let me see whether I can. Oh. Sh So we are now recording. I am Pastor Tom with DeWitt United Methodist Church. I welcome everybody to our Wednesday night guided meditation hours. So I thought that maybe for our guided meditation, we would try to just go through the Gospel of John. Um, we've done a little bit of John to this point. So I know that we did the, the first chapter, verses 1 through 18. Um, I think that we did... Uh, Nicodemus too. Um, so, so if we're going to do this kind of in semi order, I'm going back to chapter two. Um, so this is the gospel of John chapter two, verses one through 12. And the invitation is always that I'm going to read it through once. Listen, listen for what it is that, that grabs your attention in the story. Um, after I'm done reading it through once, I'll tell you what grabs my attention in the story. And then I'll read it through again um, and listen again. Uh, and then have a conversation with God afterwards about, you know, why is that, what is it that is bringing that to my attention tonight? What, what is that about me? What is it that you might be trying to tell me through the story? So on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. Jesus re responded, Woman, why do you involve me? My time hasn't yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the best wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. And what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples, and there they stayed for a few days. Now, whenever, whenever I hear this story, the, the first thing that comes up for me is kind of dad's commentary on the story, um, which my, my dad always says, you know, th this is a great story about a Jewish boy and his mother. And, and you just have to kind of hear those dynamics, right? Why, why don't you ever call me? Right? There's, the, there's this winter has a, a friend who is Jewish. And one year his mother gave him two sweaters for his birthday. So the next time that he saw his mom, he was wearing one of the sweaters. And she said, oh, I knew it. What? You don't like the other one. I can only wear, wear one sweater, mom. Right, right. So, so those, are, those are some of the dynamics of, of the story going on, right? So Jesus' mom comes to him and says, they have no more wine. And he's like, mom, what are you doing? Hey, this, is, this isn't about us. Um, and, and the reason why Jesus' mom came to him uh, is because of the huge social embarrassment 
that the the groom um, would be experiencing and and so this this really was mom's concern for caring for um, this particular family that this groom and, and to save them from a major embarrassment that yeah you know Cana and Galilee, small town, everybody would be talking about it for years to come, right? Right? Oh, do you remember what happened at the, oh, can you believe they ran out of wine? Oh, it was terrible, right? And so it is that uh, Jesus, Jesus does listen to his mother and he does change the water to wine and um, and really, not just facilitates the continuation of the party, but, but again, kind of restores people to health and wellness within their community. I mean, that, that's really kind of the basis of what the story is about, is that Jesus begins his ministry. This is, this is the first thing that he does after calling his disciples to follow him, right? Is change water into wine, and that, and that what Jesus is about is about health and wellness and joy and happiness, peace, shalom, um, and that that includes our, our connection with our community. So oftentimes, one of, the, one of the primary dynamics of Jesus' healing stories is restoring people to community. Healing, healing of the woman with the flow of blood. Healing of the man born blind. I mean, just over and over again, so many of the stories are about healing people, not just physically, but socially and in their connections with each other. Boy, and as I hear myself saying that, I mean, what, what comes up for me is, um, you know, during this time with the coronavirus and both both how it is that Jesus can connect us in community together, but also that we have a responsibility to each other to care for each other. And so when, when we hear about, you know, these, I hear story upon story of people saying, well, well, I'm not afraid, so I'm not going to wear a mask. Well, it's not about you. <laughs> it's a, the reason to wear a mask isn't for me because, because frankly, the, you know, if you hear how the virus is spread, it's an aerosol. So my breathing is coming in and out of the sides of the mask. The mask doesn't protect me. The mask protects somebody else in case I'm an unknown, unwitting carrier, right? So, so the symptoms of the virus don't manifest themselves for two or three days. And that is the time, apparently, when we are most contagious and infectious. And, and some of us also um, don't show any symptoms, but, but we carry and we spread the virus. So the, the point of wearing a mask isn't for me, it's caring for others. And so it is that, that Jesus really calls us to, to passionately care, not just for ourselves, but to be concerned about the health and wellness of others. Anyway, those are, those are the things that, that come up for me as I read the story and as I listen to all of the stuff that's going around in, in our culture and our communities today. So I invite you to listen to the story again. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, what is that to me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. 
Well, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. He then said, now draw some out, take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. Now, he didn't know where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the best wine first, and then the, the cheap wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best until now. And what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. And there they stayed for a few days. So again, invitation is, what is it that grabs your attention in the story? What, what bubbles up? in you as you listen to it and go have a conversation with God. What's that about in me? What is it that you might be trying to tell me through the story, Lord? May God bless you and keep you and may you be an experienced peace. Peace. Peace.